Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Crew Bites. Today's recipe is bowli, a popular South Indian sweet dish made using split Bengal gram also known as chana dal in India. In this video, we'll be preparing the Tarandrum style bowli from South Kerala. It's strikingly similar to Maharashtrian Puran Poli or Karnataka style obut. The main difference is that instead of jaggery and cardamom used to sweeten and flavor the dough, boli is sweetened with sugar and flavored with nutmeg and sometimes a combination of cardamom and nutmeg is used. Boli is an integral part of Trivandrum Sadhya and is usually served with Kerala Paisa. It's a tasty recipe and can be made easily if you just follow this recipe. So let's get started. So for this recipe, you need all-purpose flour, which is plain flour, about 3-4 to 1 cup, turmeric powder, ginger oil, salt to taste, chana dal or split Bengal gram, sugar, ghee, which is clarified butter, nutmeg powder, rice flour and water. So at first, let's prepare the dough for making boli. So to a large bowl, add 3 4th cup of all-purpose flour, which is plain flour or maida. To this, add about quarter to half teaspoon of turmeric powder to give that yellow color to the bowli. Also adding in quarter teaspoon of salt and just mix well using your hands. And then we're going to add water in small quantity. The water is at room temperature and knead to a soft and smooth dough. The dough should not be too tight. It should be really soft and smooth. So add water accordingly but do not add too much of water also. And see now our dough is almost ready. I'm just adding few tablespoons of gingerly oil and then continue kneading it for a few more seconds just to make it a smooth dough. See our dough is almost ready here as you can see it's very soft and smooth and not very tight that's what we want now what we're going to do is uh, add enough gingerly oil to the bowl so that the dough is completely immersed in the oil so just add enough gingerly oil to it and just make sure that the dough is completely soaked in the oil now we're going to cover this and let it rest for 30 to 45 minutes. Now let's prepare the filling. So to a pressure cooker, add cleaned and drained chana dal, which is split Bengal gram, half cup. Also adding in one cup of water, along with quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. And we're going to cover this and cook in a low to medium flame for about two to three whistles until the chana dal is soft. Do not overcook the dal. After that switch off the flame and allow the pressure to release completely. See now our chana dal is cooked well. Now using a strainer drain the liquid from the dal and allow it to dry for few minutes. Just spread it out evenly. Or you could even transfer this dal to a paper towel and you know allow it to dry completely. Now transfer this to a mixer and pulse it to get a fine powder. See this is how it should be. Now heat a pan and add 1 to 2 teaspoons of ghee which is clarified butter. Keep a very low flame. Now add the chana dal mixture to the pan. And just lightly roast in a very low flame just for one to two minutes this um, chana dal is highly nutritious it's rich in vitamins minerals antioxidants and it's also a good source of folic acid now I've just added half cup of fine sugar and give it a good mix and just mix it just until the sugar melts and it forms into a smooth paste do not make it too dry this this is the consistency you should be able to roll into balls switch off the flame and remove the pan from heat now to this add about quarter teaspoon of nutmeg powder and ghee half teaspoon see if you want you can add a pinch of cardamom powder as well 
but traditionally only nutmeg powder is added and just give it a good mix and set aside to cool slightly so that um, you can roll it into soft balls once cool slightly roll into small balls and transfer to a plate see if you cook the mixture for a longer time it will become too dry and then once it cools it will be too hard so just be mindful about that so our filling is ready and with this quantity you can make nine bolis now let's move on to the final part that's making the boli so after 35 minutes of resting time drain the oil completely from the bowl and just knead it lightly see now the dough is really soft now apply some oil on your palms and make small balls out of the dough make sure the ball is slightly smaller than the filling ball just flatten it out with your fingers and just place the filling ball in the center and just stretch the dough from all sides so that the filling is completely covered pinch off the excess covering make sure that the covering is really thin just enough to enclose the filling flatten it slightly between your palms and then lightly dust it in rice flour and roll out into a thin circle just roll out as thin as possible but make sure that the filling doesn't come out so this is how it should look like i'll show one more just take out a ball from the dough flatten it out slightly place the filling inside and then just stretch the dough from all sides so that the filling is completely covered with the thin layer of the dough pinch off the excess dough dust it in rice flour and then roll out into thin circles so just repeat the same with the remaining dough and uh, see as soon as you roll out one boli immediately cook it and then do the same with the remaining now heat a pan and keep a very low flame transfer the boli to the pan and we're going to cook this for few seconds on one side just until you see small blisters immediately flip it over cook on the other side the same way then brush it lightly with ghee on both sides so do not overcook the boli just until you see tiny blisters just like this then just transfer to a plate repeat the same with the remaining boli just cook for few seconds and then flip it over and then apply ghee on both sides and transfer to a plate so the cooking time is very less for this so now I have finished cooking all the nine boli and have transferred to a plate so it's very thin and soft it just um, falls apart when you just break it that should be and it's usually served uh, with uh, Kerala paisam like the vermicelli paisam here or it's you can also have it just like that without any paisam it's really delicious and just smells in your mouth look at the texture as you can see it's very soft and it's not too sweet or flowery and it's best served when hot so please give it a try you will love it and before concluding i'd like to thank my lovely sister for sharing this amazing recipe and made this recipe so easy with all the detailed instructions so i hope you all enjoyed today's video also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe, like and share. New videos are uploaded every Tuesday and Friday. Until then, goodbye.